Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack. In this video we'll carry on with our refurb and future proofing of the C64C I nabbed off eBay. In the last video we took a look around the machine, saw it had been opened before, took note of the serial numbers to see if we had a Franken computer and then opened it up and had a rummage inside. We plan to recap the machine, give it a good clean as it was filthy, took note of even more serial numbers and discovered we were missing the mainboard fuse, hardly mint after all. After the recap the board was given a good scrub to get rid of all the residual flux and general yuckiness that has built up over 30 years and left the old girl at least looking nice and healthy. So let's start by replacing that missing fuse. It's a 32mm by 6mm 1.5 amp fast blow glass cartridge fuse in case you need to order one. For power I'm using a modern PSU from Keylog, links in the description, never use the original PSUs, they're likely to fry your precious machine. All plugged in, let's power up, well that's disappointing, a black screen. A common cause of a black screen in a C64 is a damaged or shorted out SID chip. A quick way to test this is to remove the SID chip using a puller and being very careful with its old legs and then seeing if the machine will boot up. It doesn't need the SID in order to do so. And without the SID, she boots up just fine. So can we just swap in any old SID? These later C64Cs have the MOS 8580 SID or sound interface device and the earlier models had the MOS 6581 SID chip and whilst at a glance they appear to be pin compatible, they aren't and the key reason for this are the supply voltages from the mainboard. On the VCC main voltage line, the mainboard supplies 5 volts to the 8580. This is the same for the 6581. For the 8580, the secondary voltage on VDD is 9 volts whilst on the 6851, it's a whopping 12 volts. Therefore, you'll either be supplying 12 volt to a 9 volt chip, frying it, or have a chip that wants 12 volts but is only getting 9 volts and will simply not work. Before thinking about replacing chips though, I thought I'd inspect the traces around the SID chip for shorts, and it appears I've been a little clumsy when fitting one of the new capacitors and have created a solder bridge. I'm thinking that's hopefully what's causing the short. So we'll just clean up those joints with a little solder braid. A before and after shows how just a tiny little bridge like that can render the machine useless. Silly me. So let's hope that's all it was. Time to retest. And she's alive! Our last task on the mainboard is to fit the heat sinks. We'll give all the chips a clean with IPA wipes so that we get a good bond with the adhesive on the heat sinks. And now that we've finished all of the preventative maintenance and upgrades to the main board, we can turn our attention to the case. As we previously noticed, the case is in really good condition and just needs a good clean. There's no retrobrite needed, just a good liberal dose of isopropyl alcohol and some elbow grease. Well, 
Well, the top has turned out very nicely. Almost new. Well, 40 years old, but you know what I mean. I hope I look that good when I'm 40. And now it's time to do the same to the bottom of the case. Beautiful. I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. So let's do the keyboard now. Again, I'm not going to remove the keycaps because she's really clean. I'll just give her a good dust and a good spray and a good scrub. And with the keyboard finished, all that remains is to put the old girl back together. And of course we have to replace those three missing screws, completing our Commodore C64C. And she's done. All in all, I'm very very happy. £50 off eBay, a little bit of hard work, actually not that hard, and she's looking as good as new. I do hope you'll join me in the next video when I'm going to plug her in, get some games going and just see that everything's finally all good. If you do like the channel, please subscribe and uh, hit the bell, then you can be notified of new content. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time in the shack. Goodbye.